also a myxoid tumor with cords and chains of cells. You see why I put them right together? Because it's another thing that makes cords and chains. There's a handful of cord and chain soft tissue tumors. I guess I should make like a full list one day and put it on Twitter or something, but. Yeah, very good. Extraskeletal myxoid chondrosarcoma is exactly what this is. Um, it does make cords and chains, but obviously the cytology is very different from chordoma. These are relatively like round blue cell tumor, right? It's a kind of uniform monotonous round blue cells. They're grouped in these cords and chains or little clusters, and they're set in a myxoid background. And even though it is called a chondrosarcoma, it really in pretty much every way is totally different from regular chondrosarcoma, okay? So I want to point that out, that this is a, a unique entity, not a subtype of conventional chondrosarcoma of the bone. Okay, there are chondrosarcomas of the bone that have prominent myxoid change, but that is different than myxoid chondrosarcoma. So for though, I always make sure that I never say myxoid chondrosarcoma unless I'm talking about this tumor. I would say it's a chondrosarcoma grade two with prominent myxoid change and the femur or something, that's fine. But that's an obvious bone chondrosarcoma. The other difference that I point out right away is that chondrosarcomas of bone almost always occur in the bone or maybe sometimes on the surface of the bone. Uh, it's extremely rare for them to occur as a soft tissue only mass with no connection to the bone. I have seen like one or two times, uh, with the exception of maybe in the joint space. Occasionally you get chondrosarcomas um, rising in the joint. Um, but in any case, most of the time, true chondrosarcomas are chondrosarcomas in the bone. And then this tumor is almost always in the soft tissue with very rare exception, okay? Um, the, these tumors, even though they're called chondrosarcomas, they don't really look very cartilaginous most of the time. This one gets a little bit, you know, more chondroid here. That stuff looks quite a bit like cartilage actually. But I would say that it's very rare to see like true well-formed cartilage in this tumor. Okay. So, so if you're expecting that, you're not going to see it very often. I, this one's really good. That, that looks very much cartilage, not like normal cartilage, but it looks very much like chondroid cartilaginous stuff. But I feel like the much more classic finding that we see in these is the cords and chains of uniform round cells in a myxoid background. And then um, the, uh, the uh, what's another tumor though that could look a lot like this? I think the other closest mimic to this. Any, uh, any ideas? This is another like read my mind question, so probably not fair. I feel like myoepitheliomas and myoepithelial carcinomas, myoepithelial tumors can definitely have areas. They, they're a bit different, but they definitely can have areas with little round cells like this making little cords and chains. So um, again, those are usually S100 and keratin positive. These can be uh, S100 positive. I believe keratin is occasionally positive, but, but a lot of times they'll be negative for keratin. So that can be pretty helpful because myoepitheliomas are usually keratin positive. Um, and then of course, um, what's the molecular finding here? Good. Yeah, there's, this is a perfectly uniform round blue cells. Probably going to have a translocation, right? And indeed it does. It's the EWSR1 gene rearranged with the NR4A3 gene. Exactly. So this is a one that's an EWS rearrangement. And I will point out though, much to uh, the frustration of all, is that myoepithelial tumors can have Ewing's gene rearrangements. So this is one of those times where knowing knowing your fish and what the fish partner is and knowing what other tumors can have that particular rearrangement can be helpful. So if you truly want to diagnose this tumor with certainty, it's ideal to either get RT-PCR or dual fish to prove that there's both the EWS and an NR4A3. Unfortunately, not a, a lot of labs don't offer both of those, I feel like. So it can be challenging in those cases, but but um, if you're having trouble telling it apart from myoepithelioma. But this one is a real nice classic morphology, I think, for, for an um, extraskeletal myxoid chondrosarcoma.